we're going to be exploring the new Alchemy Museum at Rosicrucian Park. And this is the building that the new Alchemy Museum will be in. This building was constructed in 1934, and it is the Rosequaw University International Building. We have um, uh, plans to convert this into the new Alchemy Museum at Rosicrucian Park. And this is a shot of the RCY building and the new museum from, it's a drone photo. So right in the center of the screen is the RCY building that will be the new museum. And then over to the right with the solar panels, that is the Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum. And to the left with the solar panels, next to the labyrinth, that's the Grand Temple. So the new Alchemy Museum will be situated right in the center of Rosicrucian Park in front of the main fountain area. And all of Rosicrucian Park was envisioned and manifested by H. Spencer Lewis, the founder of Amwork. As you may know, Amwork was founded in New York City and then in, in 1915. And then a few years later, H. Spencer Lewis was inspired to move the order's headquarters to California, and at first he chose San Francisco. And a few years after that, he moved the headquarters to Tampa, and then finally, the headquarters of the Rosicrucian order was moved to San Jose, California in 1927. And this is a photograph of the first administration building that was built here. And even when this was the only building at Rosicrucian Park, H. Spencer Lewis created the letterhead that said Rosicrucian Park. So he envisioned this magnificent place from the very first building. And a few years later, the Rosicrucian Egyptian Oriental Museum was constructed. This too was H. Spencer Lewis's vision for Rosicrucian Park. He wanted to create a place that would attract members and seekers and those who are interested in the mysteries of life to come and experience and learn more about different cultures, different ideas. The Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum began with one artifact. This little artifact of the lion-headed goddess Sekhmet. This, was, this is still in our collection called RC1. All of the artifacts are named RC. And this sat on H. Spencer Lewis's desk. And when people would ask him, what is this? He'd say, this is the Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum. And that's how he saw it. It started with this one artifact. And today, your museum in San Jose houses the largest collection of authentic ancient Egyptian artifacts on display in Western North America. And it all began with this small Sekhmet statue. He did the same thing with the Rosicrucian Planetarium. The planetarium at Rosicrucian Park was the fifth planetarium constructed in the United States. And it's um, still presenting star shows every day. When H. Spencer Lewis traveled to Germany to the Fidosi um, meeting of the different mystical groups in Europe and the United States, he went to the planetarium in Munich. And he came back, and this is recorded in the archival meeting minutes. He came back and described his experience of introducing people to the mysteries of space and astronomy, and he said, I really want to construct a planetarium like that at Rosicrucian Park. And within a year, in the middle of the Great Depression, he manifested the Rosicrucian Planetarium. In 1939, the Rosicrucian Research Library was constructed at Rosicrucian Park, and this was designed by H. Spencer Lewis's son, former Imperator Ralph Lewis, and Ralph Lewis's brother, who uh, was an architect, Earl Lewis. So Earl and Ralph Lewis designed this together, and it was to 
house and display the amazing collection that the order was gathering. H. Spencer Lewis bequeathed his entire uh, library collection to the order, and we had other important books. So Ralph Lewis was very committed to creating a permanent home for the Rosicrucian Research Library. And this is still very active uh, up until now. It's a beautiful place. Hopefully, all of you will have a chance to experience it. In the Rosicrucian Research Library, we have all of our most important books, including original copies of the Rosicrucian Manifestos, the Fama Fraternitatis, the Confessio Fraternitatis, and the Chemical Wedding of Christian Rosenkreutz, which were published in 1614, 15, and 16. H. Spencer Lewis went through transition in 1939, and he envisioned having the Grand Temple at Rosicrucian Park. But because of limited funds during the Depression, and then after that, during World War II, you couldn't use construction materials on buildings that were not considered essential to the war effort. So 10 years after H. Spencer Lewis's transition, this magnificent temple was constructed, completing his, his dream. And H. Spencer Lewis's voice was played, a recording of his voice was played during the dedication of the Grand Temple. And the Grand Temple was dedicated with water from seven different sacred rivers around the world, the Nile and the Ganges, and it was this beautiful mystical event that included this recording of H. Spencer Lewis dedicating the Grand Temple. Then in 1966, Imperator Ralph Lewis constructed the current building of the Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum. Ralph Lewis fervently collected artifacts for the museum's collection, and it outgrew that previous building. So he and a team of researchers went to Egypt and explored the best architecture to reproduce at Rosicrucian Park. And this is most like the Temple of Amun at Karnak. And if any of you have been there, it feels very familiar when you're there with the ram-headed sphinxes and the columns. It, it's very much like that temple. And again, Ralph Lewis's brother, Earl, was the architect of this building that was constructed in 1966. Then in 2004, we dedicated the Rosicrucian Peace Garden, which is authentic to the 18th dynasty of ancient Egypt. And it is an educational garden. All of these plants would have grown in ancient Egypt and it's drought tolerant. So it's a good example for the community. Then in 2013, we built the Alchemy Garden, which is in front of what will be the new museum. Here it is. I took this photo yesterday. The plants are just gorgeous. This is the section for Earth. The Alchemy Garden is divided into four different sections related to Earth, air, water, and fire. And uh, for the fire section, for example, all of the plants, they either have red bark or red berries or red leaves, or some of them are, their growth is stimulated by fire. And again, this is the earth section that has, uh, we have poppies and lavender. And this garden includes all native plants and plants that can be used in the alchemy lab that we'll be building in the new alchemy museum. In 2015, we opened the Rare Books Room in the Rosicrucian Research Library. Some of our most important books were still in a vault because they needed to be uh, securely, they needed to be protected. So we were able to create the secure environment in the Rare Books Room at Rosicrucian Park. And now all of the most important books 
are on display. In 2015, we also dedicated the Rosicrucian Labyrinth. And this labyrinth is made of all native plants. And the paths are exceptionally wide to allow wheelchair access. This is the only completely accessible labyrinth in the world. In addition to the wheelchair paths, we also have rails at ground level so that someone who is sight impaired can use their cane to walk the entire path. Then last year, we installed solar on the roof of the Grand Temple, that's what you see here, as well as the roof of the Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum. And we achieved net zero carbon status. This is the front of the museum. And we worked with energy experts for many years trying to achieve this goal. And everyone said, with these historic buildings, it's just not possible to get to net zero carbon. And we persevered until we were able to do it. And so now we produce enough energy for all of our needs. So what's next? Next is the future at Rosicrucian Park. And in order to continue the vision that H. Spencer Lewis had of making Rosicrucian Park a dynamic, educational, tranquil place for generations to come, we are creating the new Alchemy Museum at Rosicrucian Park. And again, this is the building that the museum will be in. We've prepared the building, it has a new roof and uh, we have, the inside is a shell now so that we can add the museum on the inside. And this is the alchemy garden in front there. So H. Spencer Lewis, he was very interested in alchemy. And he himself was an alchemist, both a uh, spiritual alchemist, and he uh, practiced practical alchemy in the lab. Here is a painting that he painted that is called The Alchemist Apprentice. We have that here at Rosicrucian Park. Here's something that H. Spencer Lewis wrote on alchemy. The Rosicrucians and mystics who performed so many experiments in their laboratories were seeking through the material laws of the universe to discover universal principles which had their action and reaction in the spiritual world, as well as in the material world. They believe that just as the difference between gross metal and pure gold was a difference in character, constituted by the various rates of vibrations and by the presence of impure or unevolved unevol elements, so the differences in human character were the result of impure and inharmonious elements which might be transmuted and changed into the pureness of spiritual life here on earth. The RCUI building included an alchemy lab that was active for decades. This is a photo from the 1940s showing Orville Graves, who was um, a librarian here and also an alchemist, showing him teaching a class on alchemy, and we presented those classes for decades. The vision of the new Alchemy Museum at Rosicrucian Park. The new Alchemy Museum at Rosicrucian Park will be the definitive international venue for guests to study and experience the wisdom and history of alchemy. The new Alchemy Museum will offer an interactive introduction to the fascinating history of alchemy with its origins in Egypt, as well as hands-on demonstrations involving the seven steps of the alchemical process, lab workstations for up to 12 students, and a meditation chamber. This newest addition to Rosicrucian Park will serve to educate our guests through the symbolism of the alchemical processes on the primary purpose that each Rosicrucian student shares. That is our evolution from a lower state of being, symbolized by the base metals, to a higher state of being, 
symbolized by the radiant gold of illumination. The new Alchemy Museum at Rosicrucian Park will assist us in bringing into public awareness the profundity of the mystic's perpetual search for the Philosopher's Stone, which is our greatest potential as human beings. Here are some of the features and experiences of the new museum. It will have an introductory theater, expanded scenic alchemist workshop. So we currently have the alchemy exhibit in the Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum. This was curated by our frater, Dennis Hauk, who is um, probably the most um, uh, well-known alchemist in the world. And so we're going to expand the alchemist workshop that is in the exhibit right now, expanded in the, the new museum. We'll have historic exhibits exploring the history of alchemy during various phases of development. We'll have a working alchemy lab for workshops and demonstrations, enhanced exhibits on the seven alchemical processes, so those exhibits already exist in the alchemy exhibit. We're going to expand those. Interpretation to contextualize the teachings of alchemy within the Rosicrucian order. So to share why alchemy is important and how we study it in the order. And we'll have a meditation room and a classroom space. So this is the theater where we'll have the introduction to alchemy, and then guests will move to the next area, which presents the origins of alchemy, including in Egypt, including the Emerald Tablet and Hermeticism. On the left here, you may be able to see that the two guests who are seated are wearing uh, virtual, virtual goggles. So they're going to be able to explore a virtual alchemy lab. It'll be, it will be as if they are in the alchemy lab. And then we have the main workshop. So all of this will be in the building that is, that was built in 1934, the Rosequaw University International. All of it will be in that building. Here's a photo of Dennis Hauk. Uh, he presented an alchemy workshop along with Steve Kalick this past weekend at Rosicrucian Park. And during that workshop, he led us on a tour through the alchemy exhibit that's displayed in the Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum. So he is also the curator of the new alchemy museum. And he is an amazing person. He has a PhD in mathematics. He is one of the leaders in the field of consciousness studies, both related to alchemy as well as to mystical experiences. He is the founder of the International Alchemy Guild. He has written many books, including uh, The Emerald Tablet, The Sorcerer's Stone, The Complete Idiot's Guide to Alchemy. He's written many articles for the Rosicrucian Digest and the Rose Quad Journal. So he's been very generous with his time and expertise. And again, he is the curator of the current Rosicrucian Alchemy exhibit and will be the, and is the curator of the new museum. And here's a quick walk through the current Alchemy exhibit. Hopefully many of you have experienced this. This is the entry area. And then we have the alchemist workshop and a special section on the emerald tablet. Then we walk through the seven steps of alchemy. And in the new museum, this will be very interactive. We will have fragrances and sounds and virtual experiences and hands-on alchemy work in the new museum. So the first step is calcination, then dissolution, separation, conjunction, fermentation, 
distillation, and coagulation. We also have a copy of the alchemical document, the Ripley Scroll. And this section is the octave of creation, the operations of alchemy, and the music of the spheres. So all of that exhibit will be the foundation for the new alchemy museum. If you'd like to see details about the Alchemy Museum and some of those artists' renderings that I showed to you, they're all available on uh, rosicrucianpark.org slash alchemy-museum. So you can see all the plans there. The museum will serve to widen public awareness and interest in the topic of alchemy and to provide a venue for guests to learn the fascinating history and practice of this art of transformation. So during our time together today, we've discussed the extraordinary vision of H. Spencer Lewis, manifesting the Rosicrucian order, manifesting Rosicrucian park, and not just for his own generation. He envisioned Rosicrucian Park ser serving as an amazing resource for people who are interested in mysticism and spirituality way beyond his time. People that you have to wonder how he could have even imagined them coming in the future. The great interest in mysticism and spirituality now. He envisioned all that. He visualized Rosicrucian Park, he manifested it. And we're continuing this manifestation with the new Alchemy Museum at Rosicrucian Park. 